Hi, I'm Sidel Sierra and about to be featured on the online prosperity show. And in this episode, we're going to be covering all of the tricks and tips to entering into the crypto market, plus all of the keys to having a mindset geared towards prosperity, because we can have an amazing crypto portfolio, but how do we align that with an amazing mindset as well? So I'm going to be sharing with you some of my background and my story to where I got to where I am today, how I retired at 30, and how you can do the same through the power of cryptocurrency. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we dive deep into the realms of success, entrepreneurship, and everything else in between. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga, and today we've got a guest who's not just been riding the wave of the future, but is actively shaping it with her expertise. Now, Sidel, how are you doing today? I'm very good, Prosper. Thank you for having me on here today. Absolutely. I'm really excited about what we're about to experience today because you are on the cutting edge of education, especially when it comes to investment strategies uh, and new opportunities that come in the realm of cryptocurrencies, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Crypto is my thing. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Right. Now, for those that are watching right now, you might be wondering what me and uh, Sidel are talking about. So I want you to imagine retiring at the age of 30, you know, not just dreaming about a prosperous future, but actually living it. And thanks to the world of cryptocurrencies, our guest has managed to do that. She's not only um, an average entrepreneur, she is the co-founder of Digital Wealth Group. That's an Australian-based, um, you know, f- uh, enterprise there. And she's also an author, educator, and speaker on personal and financial freedom. Now, Sidel's journey from financial freedom to empowering others to achieve the same is nothing short of a remarkable. And today she's here to share her insights and strategies so she can help you to navigate the ever-evolving world of cryptocurrency and also turbocharge your investments. So buckle up and get ready to be uh, educated because I think I'm also going to learn a thing or two from Sidel herself. Now, Sidel, I know I could go on and on talk about your accolades, but I think I'm only just going to be taking away from what you came here to do on the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what it is that um, got you inspired to get started in cryptocurrencies. Yeah, thank you, Prosper, and thank you for the wonderful introduction as well. <laughs> it's always humbling. And um, my uh, my journey into cryptocurrencies really uh, began in my 20s when I was sort of looking at the at the day-to-day of, of business and wondering how could I create financial freedom but stepping back from that I've always been um, an entrepreneur always look for ways to create financial freedom and, and personal freedom um, I had a uh, an extreme childhood uh, teenage years and overcome a lot of uh, trauma and a lot of uh, things like that so I was able to sort of conquer that within me and my quest for personal freedom and and financial freedom has always been been alongside my journey. So cryptocurrency is very much slotted into uh, that when I came across it in my in my 20s. And then I was able to retire at the age of 30 from my investments that I made uh, in the first bull market that I was part of, which was back in 2017, quite a number of years ago now. Absolutely. And thank you so much. I mean, where you are right now, when I was 30 years old, I don't think I was able to write my name. So if you are actually... <laughs> you were able to, um, you know, retire at that age. I think a lot of people would really, really be fascinated with that. But before we actually jump into this, you mentioned two types of freedom that I think a lot of people know of, but might not quite know what it actually uh, entails. You mentioned financial freedom and personal freedom. Now, could you just elaborate a little bit on what those two types of freedoms are? And what it actually looks like for those that might not be, um, you know, lucky enough to experience those in their lifetime. Mm, Yeah, absolutely. And I really do believe that one of the biggest lessons that we're here to learn uh, is in the financial world. And many of the stresses in in our day-to-day life often come from finance. 
Uh, in fact, they say, you know, there's these quotes and you hear people say that money is the root of all evil, but I say it only is because it creates so much stress in people's lives. But if we had a, an ability to create financial freedom, then think how many stresses in our lives would actually just dissipate and how, how much more peace and harmony we would have, um, not only for ourselves, but our family, friends, and, and the people around us. So that's what I mean by financial freedom. And then personal freedom is an interesting one because I always I attribute our personal freedom to the level of financial freedom we can actually achieve. And personal freedom comes down to how much we sort of live in the past. Um, maybe we've had traumatic backgrounds. Maybe we've had uh, sort of beliefs formed that tell us that we can't and shouldn't or we're not deserving of. And therefore, when we can overcome those, we actually can attract more wealth, more abundance and uh, more personal financial freedom. And for myself, I'm a big believer in, in our money mindset, in, in moving towards the future, creating and reauthoring what I call reauthoring our reality um, by, by acknowledging that we have every moment of opportunity to to create something wonderful with every moment that we have in our lives. So I'm very much about moving forward and not sort of dwelling on the past. And so that's what I mean when I refer to personal freedom. It's, it's very much a self-liberation uh, anchored in, in, in creating a great life for ourselves. Absolutely. And thank you so much for going there with us because so many people, they think freedom is just being able to wake up, drive your car, into traffic and nobody's you know yelling at you or causing traffic uh jams and, and they think arriving <laughs> at work yeah that's yeah it's being free but that's so far away from the definition that you have given us but in your 20s that's when everybody's thinking of parties uh, traveling across the world and everything else that comes along with it but there you were already thinking about what can I do for my future what was sort of life like for you um you know as as, as a young girl to have thought you wanted to you know venture into this world of investments at such a young age mm, yeah well actually I was uh, lucky enough to have parents that were that were very invested into aligning whatever passions we had, they wanted to really harness them. And my mother was always very uh, opposite to the sort of traditional schooling. So she would have us coming along to business workshops and, and retreats at the age of 13 and 15. And she was educating us in the stock market, in property, in uh, in trading. Uh, she was teaching us money mindset uh, through courses and she was sending us to weekend retreats much to our disguise at, at a teen, in our teenage years and she was getting us to write down our goals and my parents were very much have a clear vision of your life don't let your life be wasted away um you know if you're not directing your life someone else is things like that so it was through my teenage years that we were really we were really told to become clear and focused with what we want to do but at the same time we also had a lot of fun and we did a lot of things um then in my 20s I've never worked for anyone in my life and most teenagers go work for other people. So in light of that, I, I think I worked for three months actually as a waitress and I never did that again. But I um, actually always wanted to create my own. So I wanted to create my own business and this was something I think was in my mind because of the training that I did when I was, when I was younger. Hats off to your mom. Hats off to your mom because <laughs> if people can be taught you know, life lessons around taxes, around finances, yes. and just knowing what compounding is. Like mm -hmm. you would have been exposed to that as a formidable life lesson because so many people grow up and they are fully grown babies that don't even know how money <laughs> actually functions. So congratulations. And um, if mom is probably is watching right now, then... <laughs> yes, I think she's done a formidable job. So you mentioned that she would be taking you to all these activities. Do you know some kids were being told at that time that money doesn't grow on trees while you yes. were being showed the factory of the, of the money? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. And we were surrounded by mostly people in their 50s and 60s and I was listening to all of their struggles. I was listening to things they were saying and in my mind I was saying, I never want that. I never want to be like that. How can I avoid that? And I used to think there's certain decisions that they made in their life and they started They started fine but they ended up there. And I'm like, how did they end up there and what decisions did they make to get there? 
So I always used to talk to them at lunch and why are you upset? And I was so young, I used to ask very honest questions. Why are you crying when they ask this question? Or why are you so angry about that business decision? And I would go and ask them just like an interviewer, like a little journalist walking around in the room and and sort of in my own bubble. And then inherently, I always knew I wanted to be successful, highly successful at something. I, I knew that working for other people would, was never going to create a level of financial freedom that I understood. And these were, these were the main takeaways from that period in my life. And and my parents, we, we watched my parents run, run businesses themselves. So in my mind, no one ever worked for anyone. Everyone created their own wealth. And so even to this day, my, my two brothers, I have two brothers, both own extremely successful um, businesses. I co-founded Digital Wealth Group with my 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 brother. My older brother has a very very successful business as well. So we all have created a, a foundational uh, platform based on this based on this development that we had and training that we had as teenagers. Now, Sidel, what you're talking about here is something that would actually leave grown men crying because if a young girl can come and start asking them, hey what are you doing with your life? And they'd start noticing <laughs> they haven't done much. Yes, you will definitely bring tears to grown people there. Now, I'm just wondering what playtime was like in the playgrounds with other kids because obviously those mindsets and, you know, conversations were completely different. When the other kids just looking at you being weirded out by the sort of conversations you were probably saying, or when you go to show and tell at school, you'd be like, nah, we were at a wealth building seminar over the weekend. And some kids were like, ah, we went and bought yo-yos. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, we, we always had a very, we had very much a childhood as well. So we had a good balance, I would say. It was it was never that. And my mum and my mom, mother and father were always very mindful of, you know, kind of keeping things to yourself because people may not understand at the moment. So there was a little bit of that. Um, but we we certainly know, knew how to have fun as well. There was no, no short of fun. And, uh, and, and yeah, I, I would say that that mindset, I'm not really sure. I think that wasn't really, I don't know. I, know, I probably didn't really have conversations with the other kids because I just knew that they wouldn't probably understand that. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, obviously you grew and then within the family, like you say, you started a business with your brother. I just wonder what lunch would be like or dinner at mom's, you know, on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. Do you guys just talk about life or are you talking about the next coin that has come up or the next thing that has uh, come in, 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 the, in the world of investments? Well, I mean, I'm very like I'm very grateful for my family. Like we have we have this hugely entrepreneurial family and our conversations are very we're either laughing at, you know, how far we've come and where we've come from or and we've all had humble beginnings. We we grew up as average Australian household family and through our crypto we came into enormous wealth and and then learned to manage that wealth as that wealth was coming in as well. So I think our foundation allowed us to handle that. And uh, But our conversations around the dinner table or anything from, you know, from properties to yachts to um, politics to all sorts of different things. But at the same time, we also have a very humorous and practical family. So there's also the kids and the day-to-day -day things and the householder duties and, and you know, and all the day-to-day -day things as well. Absolutely. You see, when you talk average Australian, I'm thinking Bluey and they have a bookshelf. <laughs> they have a bookshelf with only one book from uh, Scott Pape, the barefoot investor, <laughs> and it's talking about the three pots that you put your, you know, your savings into and things like that. But for you guys, like you said, you know, you, you now are talking about, you know, you know, high net worth type. Uh, activities it's now pretty much about they have yachts and they have knots um, especially when it comes to conversations with you guys but for the people at the back of the room that have just been holding on to whatever 
you know, super they took out of their um, uh, funds during, you know, the pandemic. I don't know about you guys, but so many people were allowed to, you know, access that. Give into, or access into their super and they're wondering if they still have it. You know, they're wondering where they can invest that in. Um, the, the cryptocurrency market, you know, can be very, very daunting for beginners, you know, If I put money under my pillow, I will find it tomorrow. But with the crypto, I wouldn't even know <laughs> what cloud to look at in order to be, you know, to know which yeah. one is holding all the um, the coins that I'm supposed to be holding. What sort of advice would you give to somebody who's just maybe dipping their toes into the world of digital currencies? Yeah, a great question. And there's there's many facets to that answer. But one of the main things is to really see that the crypto market, it's an asset class for the people. It gives people of, of it doesn't matter what investment background you've had, doesn't matter what technical experience you've got, doesn't matter what age you are. It is an amazing asset class that every single person has to walk through the same door of what is this crypto world and how do I get into this? And so one of the things is many people, you know, The, the biggest thing is is people chase the hype and this is where often people lose their money is because they're buying in at all-time highs. So when the prices are soaring right through the roof and uh, things are sitting at the absolute ceiling and we actually aren't there yet, uh, even though the prices are moving along, um, but people chase the euphoria and the best way to succeed in the crypto market is to be a contrarian is what we say is to be opposite to groupthink. And when everyone's doing the same thing, no one's thinking at all. So uh, we, we always encourage people to be opposite to groupthink. But cryptocurrencies in itself is actually one of the highest performing asset classes in human history. And I say to everyone, why would we not want to have just a small allocation to this incredible asset class? And it, it, with one or two clicks, we can own a few cryptocurrencies have them stored in a wallet that we control. And then we just need to time our entry and exit out of the market. And it's not like trading where you have to be looking at candlesticks and you have to know how to read charts. Absolutely not. You just have to know roughly where we are. Are we in a really, are we right in the top of the market where everything's overpriced? Or are we sitting in a what we call a crypto winter where the market is is really undervalued and it has great financial opportunity. And simply by knowing where we are timing-wise, we can actually position our entry and take profits at the right time. And the formula is quite simple. So many people are a bit nervous, but it, there is actually a really basic blueprint and formula uh, that is a winning portfolio, a winning formula that you can use. Fantastic. Now, before we jump into that winning blueprint, because I'm already you know, looking at what yacht size I will be buying. <laughs> um, Google. <laughs> exactly, you know, which is the best yacht to buy after you've had minimum <laughs> crypto education. All right. So with Digital World Group, you, you know, it sounds like you, you're literally changing the game, especially in the world of uh, finance. Could you tell us a little bit more about you know, the mission behind DWG and what, what sort of sets you apart from all the other platforms out there? Yeah. Um, so Digital Wealth Group actually started very organically back in 2017. My brother and I had already reached a financial level of success. We were traveling around the world multiple times and maybe it was our news feeds, social media news feeds that had people asking us, what are you guys doing and how did you do it? And before you knew, we were setting up, we we're generously giving our time, we we're setting up people's um, wallets, we we're driving to people's homes, we we're hosting meetups, library workshops, that type thing. So we're doing a lot of community work because we saw so many people getting what we call wrecked uh, as a sort of a slang term in the crypto world where you just people were just burning cash, getting caught up in things they shouldn't. And we had a formula that was nice and straightforward. It was, it was safe. It would protect your assets, but also expand. So it also place you for maximum upside in the market. So you were able to ride these big waves and and take as much profit as you possibly can, but without all the risk that would come with, you know, typically what new investors would do in this market. So that was, we started to help people one-on-one. -on -one, and then we had a phone call one day. Can, can you speak uh, for 80 people? Um, can you speak for a whole room full of 80 investors in this room? And uh, but the catch is we need about 12 60 odd 60 minute presentations and it needs to be this weekend, like in just a few days. So my brother and I frantically were like, okay, we can do this challenge. So we wrote all of this content from scratch, presented in front of these investors. 
And from there, we basically got picked up to do this more ongoing. And we ended up traveling the world with people like Robert Kiyosaki and uh, Harry Dent and John D. Martini. Uh, we spoke in front of thousands of people, rooms with 500 plus people in them. Uh, and it was an incredible whirlwind and something that just started very organically. But it happened because we had a, a system that would keep investors safe whilst investing in digital currencies. So that was that was what set us apart. And not only that, but we were offering one-on-one -on -one help. So not just training uh, because you can learn all this stuff, but when you go to click on things, it's like, am I clicking the right thing? Have I clicked on the right website? Is this the right plugin? If I click transfer, is it going to be there? So there's a lot of questions that can can occur when we're actually doing this for the first time. So one of the things we offer is that one-on-one -on -one support. So you're sharing your screen on Zoom and you, you help you getting in that one-on-one -on -one support. So we're pretty much the first uh, uh, crypto education company to ever offer that. And we still do to this day. Oh, absolutely. And kudos to you for choosing because I obviously believe uh, in Zig Ziglar's statement that if you help enough people get what you want, you too will get that which you um, absolutely want. And if there's so many people that are working and using that platform and, you know, cryptocurrency, it actually creates the value within the, the setup in and of itself. Yes. Now, you've actually yes. helped you've not only succeeded yourself and, um, you know, obviously connected with all these respectable names, like you mentioned, Robert Kiyosaki and uh, D Martini, but you've also helped countless, um, you know, of your clients turn whatever investments that they have into seven, um, you know, um, seven or eight sort of figure uh, windfalls. Can you just maybe walk us through, you keep referring to a blueprint and a strategy, not necessarily giving off the farm, but just a high level understanding so that people would understand what you meant when you say contrarian, because so many people just want the high level understanding. And then we will then dive into how you then do the one-to-ones and um, invite people to get started with you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So how it works is firstly, uh, you the timing is everything. So where are we in the market phase? So that's the first question that investors need to ask. Am I buying at the top? Because if I am, I'm going to be locking in losses for years to come. Or am I buying before the big run up? And if so, I'm going to be placing a lot of gain in front of me. So that's the, the first question that new investors need to ask. And the second thing to consider when we talk about a blueprint is, is diversification. Because many people think buying crypto is buying Bitcoin and you just wait. Okay, but it absolutely isn't. So we recommend a portfolio of 10 to 15 cryptos diversified into what we call main growth sectors. So if you want to look for where the biggest players are in the crypto market, where are the biggest gainers? We want to look for what we call, where is the infrastructure happening? Where is the development happening? Because it's a little bit like if you think of the apples of the world, okay? They were developing the computer space. So we look for the same sorts of projects within the crypto space and we invest into them. So we look for major developments in AI, um, in in artificial intelligence, sorry, in the metaverse, uh, in decentralized finance, which is basically the new banking system. We look for new blockchain technology. So where is all of this development happening? Then we pick the right cryptos within those sectors and we combine them into a well-diversified portfolio. And between your market timing and choosing the right coins, you then let the market do the heavy lifting. And uh, the only thing you need to focus on after that is when do I exit? When do I take profit? Because uh, many investors will sit on huge gains and get greedy and ride their gains all the way to the floor. So <laughs> the trick is emotional management. And that's the third component of, of our success blueprint. I like that because... You know, so many people can't focus even on just yes. the diet or now you're talking about having to look at different industries and diversifying and things of that nature. That's just a lot of calories to burn for people to actually, um, <laughs> you know, keep yeah. focus, you know. So a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with focus and commitment, especially when it comes to even running their own business. They can't choose one subject to follow. Mm -hmm. They can't choose one um you know client niche to sort of serve um and especially like you say you know they come to juggling all these multiple ventures yes. how do you personally sort of manage to shift your focus 
you know, and achieve remarkable success in your crypto education business because so many people can can do that. Right now, as we are speaking, somebody is either watching this video while it's in a window that they're scrolling through either their Facebook or their TikTok, and that just takes away their focus. They just want their focus, to that's correct, hear the yeah. one thing, but you've managed to to focus and look at where you are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, focus is really key and that is really underpinned in, in discipline, self-discipline. And one of the biggest things is, is I always say, it's not how we start a project, it's how we end and to really see a project all the way through. And that was really how Digital Wealth Group was formed, was beginning this project that was monumental at the beginning. How are we going to teach all these people when there's so many questions that come through and just our support ticket desk alone has hundreds and hundreds of, of support tickets a week. It's like, how do you even keep up with this sort of stuff? So many moving parts and people just look at the surface and think, oh, that looks great, but not realizing the huge work that goes underneath. So a lot of the time people think that they can do five things at once and they will succeed at all. But my key was succeed at one and do it very well, then move on to the next thing when that thing is running really well. And you will only know that from when you can actually walk away and it still runs even better or the same as, as from when you walked away. And I don't think we ever really do walk away from anything. We're always sort of managing, always overseeing things. So for me, it was that, but also uh, relying and trusting my team and having a, a team that I can trust. So micromanaging was something I used to do a lot in the past. And in order for me to really take another level, I had to completely let go of the control and trust. And simple things like... Uh, with all my employees asking me, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I would then say, what would you do? What would you do? How would you respond? And instantly getting them to think rather than me to spoon feeding all of the information to them. And only when I started disconnecting myself and getting them to think and taking responsibility was I able to be completely free and be able to do this to the scale that it is today. Because I, ha I manage my own personal cryptocurrencies and I manage a a huge company like Digital Wealth Group as well, but it would be impossible all on my own. So delegating and 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 trusting the team and and really being grateful for their skills. I mean, so many amazing people have so many skills, but they're suppressed because their bosses are micromanaging or they're not seeing the full talent that that employee can bring to the table. So when you really see someone's potential and strength, then you you can really leverage their skills and they just feel like comp they feel completely fulfilled and satisfied as well. And when you have a dozen people feeling like that, you run a pretty amazing company. Oh, that that is absolutely true because when somebody feels ownership for the actual exactly. results of the business, um, okay. you know, that creates, you know, them putting skin in the game. Whereas if you are just you know, creating safety nets around them, they yes. are definitely not going to take charge. And when things fall from the shelf, they'll just look at it and be like, that's not my job, you know? Yes. So correct. Like now you've got a fast launch program. Does that mean by the end of this video, I would have already set up my account already <laughs> make money, and uh, yeah, already shopping for <laughs> that yacht because now you've, you've put a yacht in my head and I'm just thinking... <laughs> What am I doing in this hot Melbourne weather? I could be out levanting <laughs> in the sea, you know, because <laughs> my, my crypto has hatched. Um, could you maybe give us a glimpse into what participants can actually expect from this program and how they can be a part of it? Yeah. Yeah. And it is fast launch for a reason because seven years into this game, we don't, we, we're not into fluff and into filling things. We just like to get straight to the point. So you, the fast launch program is the quickest way to get into the market safely, diversified. So we actually give you, we have model portfolios of model cryptocurrencies you can actually replicate. Um, if you didn't want to go do, you know, hours and hours of research, we have what's called a watch list. So we do actually set all of our members up immediately with their first portfolio because the first goal is to get you into the market because this market doesn't wait for anyone and it's non it's not forgiving. It's very giving, but it's not unforgiving. Okay, if we snooze, we lose. So uh, it's very much about entering our positions in. So once we have the position in, the learning and lessons and understanding come later. So we tend to focus on building more of an in-depth understanding once you have your assets ready to go. And that's all done one-on-one -on -one with a coach and you have all the training, you have market updates, you have coin picks, uh, you have everything you need to know to, to navigate this market. 
right down to security and asset protection and all the other sort of what we call the boring bits of managing your crypto, not just the fun glitz and glamour of growing in a portfolio in a bull market. So everything you need to succeed in this market is in the fast launch program. And within the first two weeks, you pretty much have an up and running portfolio if you're if you're an action taker. And if you're sort of a little bit like to take your time, maybe within the three to four weeks, you have a fully set up portfolio. So that's the fast launch program. Fantastic. All right. While, while you're saying that, let me just cancel the order that I was putting on the yacht because I thought this would be immediate. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were already asking about the color and how I was going to pay. So just put that to the side. Maybe put a uh, put a pre-order for about four weeks then, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So for me to get started, what would be the best place for me to jump on to? Yeah, absolutely. So go to digitalwealthgroup.com.au. So it's the .au at the end forward slash free training. So digitalwealthgroup.com.au forward slash free training. And in there is a 90 minute webinar and you have access to the training materials. Uh, It's a 90 minute talk about what's actually going on in the market right now and how you can safely enter. So everything we've spoken about today, but in a deep dive And in the last section of that 90 minutes, we talk about how you can actually get started in the full package that we have um, with um, some safe links if you'd like to get started and and on your way. So very easy. Just visit the link and you can get going from there. Absolutely. You know what I really love about this? I will definitely put the links and the show notes below, but I really absolutely love the fact that you haven't shied away from the fact that there's a learning curve. So many people will be like, yeah, it's going to work. It's going to, you know, jump on. You see, I was uh, jokingly saying, oh, it's immediate because it's a fast launch program. <laughs> I wanted to just really put the fact that it's not instant. It's not overnight. Like you said, it does take a lot of time and there's a big learning curve and you guys are consistently learning. Now, when we started, you mentioned that you had a mentor in your parents and in your in your mom, especially who took you to all these places and got you this bit of a head start. Now, you've also gone around and surrounded yourself with leading entrepreneurs and financial experts. Now, could you please let me know and the person who is still watching up until now, how important is mentorship in achieving uh, success and um You know, have you had any mentors that significantly have stood out throughout this this time? Because from what I'm seeing, everything that you guys are doing is all about teaching others to be, do and have a happier existence. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, if we want to get somewhere quick, we we go to somewhere someone who knows how it's done, don't we? Because I, I always use the analogy, if you're going to paint a house and you've never painted, it's going to be a daunting experience. But if you have someone come with you to the hardware store, get all the brushes, the paint tins and everything, that house is painted within the next few days. And, uh, and so it's about leveraging. It's about leveraging those that have walked before us. It's about leveraging the knowledge that, you know, is just effortless for someone to share And that's how we really scale our wealth and get there quicker. And why would we want to take years to do something that can potentially be done in just a few months? And we were talking about the learning curve. And and really, if if something, I, I talk about a potential retirement in two to four years through cryptocurrency, and some people have done it in one to two years. And so this is, but nothing ever comes like straight onto our lap, does it? I mean, sometimes the good things you do learn, but there's satisfaction in that learning experience. So the mentors that I've had right through my life, they've talked so much about things like radical self-evaluation, really reflecting on what we're thinking, what we're doing with our lives, how are we taking action towards our goals, uh, things like that. So I always recommend having a mentor because they're going to see the things that we may not see in ourselves, um, including our own limiting beliefs, and be able to scale our wealth, be able to scale everything and all of our dreams in a much faster way. So mentorship is, it's the golden key that, so many people, we're taught to do everything on our own schooling. Uh, we're, we're sitting by ourselves. We do exams by ourselves. We're trained to just handle and manage everything ourselves. And then, but the real way to success is is leveraging and and really having that help. So it's an interesting paradox that we live in. Oh, absolutely. And uh, one thing that comes to mind is, you know, a question that some people might be asking right now. 
Do you think Channel 7 will be a great place for me to get all the information that I need about markets and everything that's happening within <laughs> the cryptocurrency market, you know, just so that I have an informed decision on <laughs> how to actually proceed? Because now I'm really thirsty for that yard. <laughs> well, actually, do you know the answer to that is yes, only because it will tell you where, when not to buy. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it'll tell you when not to buy, and often when it's loud and clear in the media is is the time when we want to be wary as as anything. So, um, Channel Seven has a great key. It's a great indicator. It's called a top signal. <laughs> it's called a stay away signal. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely fantastic because you know knowing us, we'll be sitting and thumping through the newspaper looking for indicators of when Definitely. to actually. Yeah, you know, uh, by I think it was Warren Buffett that um, mentioned the statement that uh, be fearful when the market is greedy and be greedy when the market is fearful. And that fearful. just goes around for any sort of investment vehicle that's out there. And um, I really appreciate, you know, what you have um, shared with us today. But it will be remiss for me to not ask you, I know you're already into the future, you're already futuristic with the way you're already dealing with these investments, but what's next? What What is in the horizon for um, Cidel and maybe your brother um, with the Digital Wealth Group? Any exciting projects or initiatives that are in the horizon that we should look out for? Well, there is actually. And one of the, the biggest things is is what I call riding this wave that we're on right now. So we're coming into the next bull market. And right now we're actually in the pre-bull market phase. So I believe the later half of this year we'll be entering into the official bull market, which is when all the prices are really going up. And right now we have this sort of limited window. And this wave, we've been calling it an institutional field wave. And we're going to see... The, all of these new altcoins, we're going to see huge amounts of development. We're going to see global adoption on an even larger scale that happens on not only a retail level, which is a mum and dad investor, everyday investor like yourself and I, um, but also the major institutions like hedge funds, endowment funds, pension funds. All of a sudden, everyone is tipping into crypto. But I say to everyone, if you want to read the future, we can see it coming and I ask what side of that wave do you want to be on? So my goal right now is positioning as many investors to ride this incredible wave because that is going to have an onflow effect into the broader market and we're going to see more innovation, more opportunity than we've ever seen, particularly in the, um, the AI section. I believe anything to do with gaming and AI is going to have a huge run in this next bull market. So any sort of cryptocurrencies that are sort of pegged to anything that are, represent any AI sector of the market will most likely do very well. And uh, overall, I believe we'll see what I'd be calling a popcorn popcorn year for crypto. So, and uh, so I always uh, recommend get, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's, everything's popping off. And it's not only that, the investor can sit there eating their popcorn going, wow, look at this, look at this. It's incredible. So, so the time to take action is now. So my message is, is the future, but the future is now. We're creating our future in every moment. So, Take action and uh, and be part of this amazing, incredible asset class that gives so much to people. Absolutely. What a beautiful sentiment. And I love these new names that you're throwing in about there's, you know, there's a winter market, then there's, you know, popcorn set up and things of that nature. I think it's a fun place for us to learn. And I really appreciate you opening the floodgates for us to actually learn from DWG. And there you have it, folks, a truly enlightening conversation with Sidel, uh, the powerhouse behind DWG, Digital Wealth Group. And remember, in the world of cryptocurrency, knowledge is power. And with Sidel's uh, guidance, you are not just investing in digital assets, but you're also investing in your financial future. This is something that you are going to uh, want to have, you know, alongside because as Sidel tried to say, if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. And be sure to watch this episode for all its invaluable insights shared with you today. And don't forget to subscribe to the Online Prosperity Show for more enriching conversations and with the trailblazers such as Sidel here. And if you have a 50-year-old in your life who doesn't know what to do with their investments, I think you just need to share this episode with them. It might actually be that, um, you know, wind beneath their wings that they needed 
in order for them to have that financial freedom they've always been dreaming of. Until next time, stay prosperous, stay inspired, and keep chasing those dreams like I'm doing with my yacht right now. Bye for now. <laughs>